uh, architect Pierre Moro. Salam alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. And he'll be talking to us about uh, projects, culture in the world. So thank you for all the people who is following us uh, today with the project culture in the world. First of all, I would like really to say uh, thank you for Mohammed al Mashaurawi and Archinect for this incredible opportunity. And of course, for all the people who are following us uh, today. I hope that my English will be understandable. I will try to explain, to say everything in a very, very simple way, also because I'm not so good in English. So that's the way. So coming to what we will discuss today, I divide uh, this uh, short presentation in eight points. First of all, we will speak about the definitions about what we're speaking today. Uh, what will be the main question to understand where we are going? Uh, when was the start point? It will be very interesting to start the start point uh, of uh, the history of architecture and uh, the achieved results uh, that happened because uh, of this uh, uh, start point. Then we will speak about the ideal environment for all the people who love, of course, make projects. I think all the audience who are following us today. And uh, of course, I will be able to compare three different situations, Italy, Mexico, and Russia. Why Italy, Mexico, and Russia? Is because I have three different passports from Italy, uh, because my parents, Mexico, because I was born, and Russia, because uh, I get married with one uh, Russian uh, woman, and today we have a Russian uh, um, Then I will explain my short Russian experience here, and we will arrive to conclusions. I hope, uh, please, then I try to translate by Google, Yandex, making whatever, then the translation in uh, Arabian is correct. If not, uh, please, I'm not guilty, is Google or Yandex. So in any case, let's go for definitions. So when we uh, need to speak about project culture, first of all, we need to understand what is the culture definition. So here you're able to read if you want, but at the end, uh, it's very funny because in this Kid Britannica, they uh, start uh, with the idea of uh, food, so cultural food. I was speaking about Italy, Mexico, and Russia. And just to make you understand much better what I'm speaking about, uh, I am sure that more than 80% of uh, you know about Italian food, but not so many about uh, Mexican tacos or, for example, Russian borscht. So that is to say that we have something that we understand together. This is Italian food. We try. We know when it's spaghetti or something like this. So in this case, culture is something who make more near to people around something. So in this case, when we have Italian culture, it's because we share this. But in any case, today we are in a multicultural world, and we need to understand what it means, this culture of the definition. Speaking about project definition, I wanted to say in general, what is a project? A project is a planet work to achieve a particular purpose. I want to say this because to make a project is not just a design project, an architectural project. There are many projects that we make every day, but we need to understand what it is exactly, a planet work to achieve a particular purpose. So here we arrive to the main question. And the main question is very simple. Okay, so we arrive to the point, what does project culture mean, okay? So that's the main question, and we need to understand what it means, project culture. So let's go and check something that for us is completely familiar. Uh, I'm sure that all the people who are watching here in this moment uh, knows that we're speaking about something who have four wheels and a motor. And of course, this we're speaking about the most well-known uh, brands in the world. I choose, of course, to make this example uh, Ferrari, who will support us, uh, us much better. And here we have uh, the question. Here we're speaking about a Ferrari 812 super fast, a supercar. Okay? And the main question right now is, how much does a Ferrari cost? You know what is funny? In less than five minutes, you are able to find um, on the internet the price. This supercar costs four hundred eighty thousand dollars. So, correct question: If we need to speak about uh, uh, Ferrari, is not the price. Is how much does a Ferrari project cost? And you know, it's funny. Even 
uh, if you try on the internet to find it, you will never find it. The other question it was how long time it takes to make uh, for Ferrari to make a prototype project. So there are many questions that we think that we know, but it's not correct. So we don't have this culture, this project culture around us. I promise for all the women, the next time I will make a, an example about bags. But for me, Ferrari was more simple. I promise next time I will do it. In any case, the start point uh, of the project uh, uh, starts almost 2000 years ago. Where? In a city called Rome. In that period, Rome was very important. There was the Emperor Caesar Augustus, and here we have uh, the star today, Marco Vitruvio Polone, who is this man. He was an architect who decided to give as a present to the um, Emperor Caesar Augustus um, something unusual. It was not existing. He decided to write uh, the 10 books uh, on architecture. Uh, the reason why he made this is because, of course, he wanted to be near to the most powerful person in that period who became his architect. And the funny is that uh, he explained in the second book, uh, in the introduction, that 300 years before Dinocrates of Rhodes, uh, he explained and described a very handsome person that uh, he wanted to get in contact with Alexander the Great. Uh, and he was so incredibly handsome that for him it was very simple to get in contact with him, Alexander the Great. And Alexander the Great said, for today, you became my uh, artist. So uh, Marco Vitruvio tried to uh, not to do the same because he said, I'm not beautiful, I'm not handsome like Dinocrates. So please, Emperor Caesar Augustus, I give you as a present these 10 books. And it was a kind of marketing strategy, let's say like this, to get in contact with uh, the Caesar. Funny, he never get in, this, uh, in the contact with this most powerful person. And the most funny thing is that he was not so well known 2000 years ago. So maybe you do not know about this man, but for sure you know about this role. And this is Leonardo da Vinci, who drew the Vitruvian man. So probably in the Renaissance, this man became absolutely more important, even Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, make him incredible famous even for us today. So the most important question is what happened and why these 1,500 years there was this period where Vitruvio was not so important. Well, first of all, uh, in the 15 centuries, I'm able to tell you with one paint of Paolo Uccello, uh, who is in the National Gallery of London, then there were incredible words. In the Middle Ages, uh, uh, the cities were closed uh, because they were afraid about every kind of invasion from every kind of kingdoms who were near. But if you check, please, with attention in these paintings, we're speaking about the introduction of the perspective of the 3D models, of the 3D vision that, of course, uh, started with the Battle of San Romano. Before this, everything with, uh, was B-dimensional. So what happened? It happened then it was discovered again, this 10 books of uh, Marco Vitruvio and Leon Battista Alberti rebrought uh, the Re Edificatoria, that is uh, on the art of building. Again, 10 books uh, when he started to explain uh, more or less uh, how it was need to be done, the architecture in the period, the most important period was changing everything in the last 500 years. So we're speaking about the Renaissance. Uh, by the way, I wanted to show this, uh, the ideal city, because even the idea of the city, of the construction of the city started to change. It was not anymore living inside the walls, but these walls start to be opened. And as you could check, there is already the idea of the perspective quite clearly. So this is the Renaissance. After, again, uh, 100 years, uh, Another architect, Andrea Palladio, wrote the four books of architecture. These uh, books uh, make an incredible influence, not just in Europe, but arrive also in the United States and start again with the period that it was called the classicism. So what is interesting to say? Then all this revolution happened in a small territory between Rome Florence, uh, Venice, and Vicenza. 
Then today is called Italy, but it became Italy just in 1861, before there were many, many kingdoms. Funny. I tried to check in Instagram because I was thinking then the Vitruvio make an incredible marketing strategy because it's uh, almost a thousand years and we're speaking about this. And you know what is funny? I found Marco Vitruvio on Instagram. I found also Leon Battista Alberti. And uh, the most funny thing, I found Andrea Palladio official. So that is to say that there was Andrea Palladio fake and also Alexander the Great. I didn't found Dinocrates. That is to say, then it's not good to do not write a book. So what are the achieved results for us? Because we all of us, we are making this uh, um, profession. So uh, in Italy and the Western countries, for sure, what we get, we get 24 manuals on building. Uh, and believe me, it's important to say that architects who were writer make the difference in the history of architecture. I want to tell you something another with the, um, the example of Santa Maria del Fiore in Florence. Uh, they make this church and they were not able to cover this big dome. So the project started to become something another, not just ideas. This is Piero della Francesca, who understand exactly how to make this dome and how to make as a model of project as a business plan. And the most interesting in this period, and for that reason, Italy, what we call Italy became so important, is that they start to make a new construction method. That is to say that Piero della Francesca didn't make just the design, but understand exactly how to create this incredible dome that is considered the biggest one in the world. We're speaking about 1436. I really uh, suggest uh, to found on the internet, on YouTube, uh, this video, how an amateur built the world's biggest dome uh, is on YouTube and is National Geographic who make three means video. And uh, it's very funny and very interesting. Why an amateur? Because it was not yet considered as an architect. So what happened in this period? It happened also then the corporations who were making uh, construction and projects uh, became more powerful. So becoming more powerful, start to make some definitions than even today in Italy, start to be as a legal definition. In Italy, we say regola dell'arte, rule of art. Uh, in English, it's not quite clear understandable. It's in compliance with accepted standards. Well, funny, this was five, uh, 500 years ago, and even today in our civil code, in the article 2022-24, you are able to found then even a judge when we say by the rule of art, he understands perfectly what we're speaking about. This happened just in Italy. I try in Mexico, nobody understand. In Russia, nobody understand about what I'm speaking about. So what I'm able to tell you, we need to speak about the ideal environment. In this case, for us, we make projects. So the ideal environment is when you found a place where there is a building tradition, a place where there is construction innovation, a place where is design tradition, making projects, and there is also design innovation because cannot stop there. We need to continue to uh, our life. Legal recognition, that is to say that we understand what we are speaking, the law, um, the law understand what you are doing, and also there is a good legal coordination. I will explain later what it means. So this is not the place where you can live. This is paradise for all the people who uh, make uh, our profession. So uh, now let's compare Italy, Mexico, and Russia. As I told you, is the three places where I have, uh, in any case, uh, uh, passport and where I was living. I was living also in other places, but I'm able to speak something about this. What were we able to say? Building tradition, for sure, Italy, I told you, 2000 years. Mexico also. Russia, no. There is no building tradition. They're every time import uh, all building traditions, even from Italy. Construction innovation, there is in Italy, there is also in Mexico. Mexico is neighbor of the United States, and for that reason, they have uh, uh, so many innovations, especially on modern buildings. 
in Russia, there is no disease innovation. Uh, design tradition, Italy, for sure, Mexico, Russia, no. Design innovation, there is. There is because Russia and Mexico are uh, young countries, and of course, they push to have a design innovation. Uh, legal recognition, there is in the three countries. Legal coordination, just in Italy, and in general, in Europe. Not in Mexico, not in Russia. So this is the ranking I'm able to say. Six for Italy, four for Mexico, and two for Russia. Question is, so let's go and live uh, all of us in Italy. That will be the best place. But there are also advantages and disadvantages. I'm able to say, please check that this is the skyline of Rome and at the bottom of Milan. Advantages and disadvantages. So, advantages. Uh, all people say that it's the most beautiful city, not, not because I'm Italian, I have three passports, but really it's like this. My, my wife loves Rome so much, but try to think if you are an architect and you need to make here near one new building, how you will feel when you have all these kind of neighbors, uh, uh, colleagues, the architects who make like this, you, you feel really terrible, it's not so easy. And it's not just Rome, also Florence, also Venice. Uh, Milan is a little bit different, and I would like to tell you also another aspect that happened in Italy. In Italy, this is the, uh, the main church, it's called Duomo di Milano. And uh, the church was very powerful and was able to stop the process of skyscrapers. They asked uh, to never make a building higher of this uh, building of Duomo di Milano. Uh, it was possible just uh, at the end of, um, let's say, after the Second World War, to create in Milan this building that is called P Pirelli Building, made by Gio Ponti and uh, Luigi Nervi, who was an engineer. And uh, you know what is the funny thing? They, they, they put here a sign, uh, it's called La Madonnina, they put it here because it was higher uh, than the Duomo of uh, uh, Duomo of Milano. Uh, in any case, this building from 1958 till 1966 uh, was considered the highest building in Europe. That is to say that in Europe, there was no this tradition of skyscrapers. Uh, very interesting building. Of course, today Milan passed through this problem. Today, the skyline of Milan is absolutely different. I'm not able to say that we have skyscrapers, but of course, we have buildings higher than the Duomo of Milan. In any case, this is the vertical forest of uh, Stefano Boeri. Uh, let's check now about the classification, about these disadvantages and advantages. Of course, tradition is in the first place. Don't forget, please, then more or less, there are 1,500,000 architects in all over the world. The 10%, 150,000, are, uh, are in Italy. So try to understand how many competitors you have here. About speaking about how to make a project is clear for sure by law and by tradition, who do what. I told already then to have important colleagues, neighbors who in the past are make incredible uh, great buildings is not so easy for an architect who need to start. All population, not just in Italy, 530 millions in Europe uh, is the population and the 65% of them has more than 60 years old and a very small territory in Italy, 300,000 square kilometers. So I put my classification and we're about to, you know, just two points. Let's go to Mexico, this is Mexico City, and Mexico has the influence, as you check, of the United States. So I cannot say skyscrapers, but high buildings there are, and many in Mexico City. They have a, a Arquitectura uh, Prehispanica, uh, this in Spanish uh, means before uh, Hispanic domination. This is a text uh, pyramid, and this is a, a Mayan uh, pyramid. Um, Hernán Cortés arrived in 1510 in Mexico, and after this period arrived the colonial period. Uh, they arrived with the Catholic religious, they arrived with these churches, but the population didn't want to go to these churches, so Spanish covered the pyramid, and they build on the top of the pyramid these churches just to ask them to follow the religions, just to let you know. The best architect or 
best architect or more well known is Luis Barragan. Uh, he was born in 1902 and he died in 1988. Uh, even Joe Ponti said that he was a great architect. It's interesting to check his uh, uh, work. But in any case, Mexico for sure is a modern uh, city uh, because 100 million population, 50% uh, has less uh, than 30 years. So try to understand. So for me, uh, advantages is of course that they have Aztec and Maya culture. That is to say that they have a strong tradition about making projects in any case. Spanish and uh, USA influence, in my personal opinion, on design is not so good, but it's a personal opinion. Speaking about uh, when they need to make a project, uh, there is a mix of skills because an architect and designer make also construction. And this is a very big plus when you need to make uh, uh, construction, so it's uh, make a very high level. Uh, there is not really, I'm not able to say that legislation is completely correct. Uh, it's very good for new buildings, but not so much uh, for all this one. There is a young population, as I say, and also the territory is 2 million square kilometers. So I think that Mexico is a good place uh, where to go. Let's go to the Russian, Russian Federation. So here we have the skyline of uh, Moscow. Here we have the skyline of uh, St. Petersburg. Here we have Moscow City. We will speak about this. Uh, this is not uh, Disney World or Disney. This is uh, the Kremlin. And let's go here to tell you this is the Kremlin. Then already 500 years ago, uh, there was a request uh, to bring Italians to make the project and to make these walls. So already this uh, tradition of import, uh, um, not just project, but even people who was able to do the work. Uh, in 1703, the Tsar decided to change the capital uh, and bring it from Moscow to St. Petersburg. And of course, the Tsar invite incredible uh, many architects uh, from Italy, Germany, uh, France, uh, Switzerland, and make an incredible nice uh, uh, city than is uh, St. Petersburg. Uh, this is Moscow city, by the way. Uh, there are the most uh, tallest, uh, there were the more tallest uh, buildings uh, uh, in Europe, but all the projects were made by foreigners, most uh, Americans and uh, English, that is to say, Stone uh, over Arup, and all the companies who make this construction are Turkish, so there is no Russian. By the way, uh, I say that there were the biggest tallest because this is Lakta Center, if I'm not wrong, from Gazprom in St. Petersburg, the tallest building in Europe made by Ovearup, uh, for example. So it's clear then in Russia, there is no even this idea uh, to start having a tradition of construction. And I will explain you also why. So structural design, Thornton, Tomazetti, some uh, Ovearup. So it's clear then the, they do not have this tradition. So speaking about advantages and disadvantages, let's say that the Russian Federation has, of course, this beauty-oriented country, for sure. They love beauty, and that's already good. Uh, influence of the Soviet period, uh, I need to explain. Uh, then one friend, Yuri, who was the architect, the main architect of Krasnodar, explained me, Pierre, for 75 years, uh, we didn't have the opportunity to make projects. Private people didn't have the opportunity to make a project. That is to say that uh, just the government uh, give this opportunity to have houses. So they lose uh, 75, uh, 70 generations, let's say, then they do not understand what is a project. So this is really uh, the main problem. For that reason, when you make a project, uh, nobody understands who does what. So it's an incredible problem. And you say, maybe, Pierre, you're crazy. No, I'm not crazy. Because even the legislation is a labyrinth. If I want to find something about uh, uh, Italian legislation or, or European legislation, I'm able to go to the internet and I found everything maximum in 20 minutes. Believe me, we have lawyers who sometimes they do not understand what we need to do. They have a young population, sure, more younger than the European one, and this is great. 17 million of square kilometers. But in any case, you check through. So, if you want to make the classification where is the best place where to go to live if you make projects, of course, 
we need to speak about the ideal environment where Italy is at the top for sure. Advantages and disadvantages, what I calculate right now. And of, of course, there are many other topics that we need to put in, into consideration. Economic policies of the country. Who knows what's going on in your country? Economic policies close to. So Italy is in Europe and uh, is good and is bad. Mexico is near, near to the United States. Russia is the biggest country of the world, but also is near to China. What is the future perspective of the country and what is about the intellectual property? Because what we do is part of intellectual property. And in Russia, believe me, it's not so easy uh, to protect uh, what you are doing. So final classification, Italy is okay, so small. Mexico looks uh, interesting and Russia not so good. In any case, I will show you uh, very fastly the Russian experience that I had here very shortly. In 2016, uh, we had uh, the opportunity to make uh, a tender, Bosco Casa in Petrovsky Passage, uh, Moscow, I say already. And the uh, client was uh, uh, Mikhail Kuzinovich, uh, an oligarch uh, and uh, the owner, I could say, of GUM. GUM is like the Arabs of London or Lafayette in Paris. Well, GUM is GUM in Moscow, and also Petrovsky Passage. Exactly in this building, historical one, we make this tender, and uh, we had uh, the opportunity to work on it. Situation was not so easy, of course, for many reasons. Uh, even if it was historical, there was many damages. He was working already to try to make the measures uh, already four years ago. We make this project for 500 square meters for a uh, uh, boutique for uh, all the components of the house, Bosco Casa. And the result was, uh, in any case, acceptable for all the people who was uh, involved in this project. So I'm able to say then the place is Moscow, area 500 square meters, realization and near 1 million uh, euro. The status is realized year 2016. 2017, we make Dacia of the general Sokolov in the Black Sea. Uh, also, historical building, please, I not, I'm not able to understand how it's possible. Then they make this uh, external metallic structure. Then for me, I, I, when I arrive, I say it's temporary. No, they make it like this. So <clears throat> there are so many things that I don't understand really in, in Russia. And what we did, this is forbidden in Italy. You are not able to do like this. We covered with one system that is called Capotto. And we increase practically of more than 15 centimeters of the building uh, to cover this damage made by metallic structures. So uh, I'm able to say that in Italy, this is a fake uh, restoration. In any case, we work at the, by the standards who ask the, the Russian Federation. And at the end, uh, we arrive. Uh, sorry, it doesn't work. OK, no, I'm sorry. I lose some images. I'm sorry. But in any case, uh, it was supposed to be um, a boutique hotel and after became the house uh, of our client. Uh, looked nice, but unfortunately the client asked us the project very, very fast, but at the end of three years, four years, and he didn't finish yet uh, the work. So this is the situation, Dacia General Sokolova, Oginka, um, Black Sea, area 750 square meters, the house, uh, almost 2,000 square meters of park, of garden outside, realization 240 million rubles, uh, still on the realization and the year of the project 2017. Then uh, almost, I'm saying last year, no, two years ago, we make a Thun building, it's very famous, uh, this name in all over Russia. This is in Krasnodar. There was abandoned building, very, uh, almost 50 years, nobody was there. And uh, the client asked us to make a luxury boutique uh, for important brands like uh, Christian Dior, Gucci, Prada, and so on. Uh, these are the facades. What we did, uh, it was to pass through all the um, floors with a, let's say, monumental lighting system made by Maziero. Then I need to say thanks to them for the support. Uh, structure was not so strong. Outside looks more um, stronger than uh, really it was. We make this hole pass through uh, this uh, monumental uh, lighting. And I'm able to say that I'm 
uh, proud about the situation. Uh, we will go to a competition next month uh, in Krasnodar uh, for this uh, restoration and uh, for what we did uh, inside. I'm able to tell them uh, already they make the first floor, they are doing the second floor, and uh, the project is looks uh, interesting in any case. 3,000 square meters of boutique one in this period, a test your fashion group. This is real photographs, uh, how it looks, and, and this is uh, inside. So in any case, place Krasnodar, area 3,000 square meters, realization 650 million rubles, almost $10 million, in the year 2020. So conclusions, what I'm able to say, also because I already spent 37 minutes, uh, uh, what I'm able to say, then Marco Vitruvio uh, spoke about three points, three main points. Uh, one is uh, related with foundations. The other one is related with the uh, functions. And the last one is related with beauty. So these three concepts uh, uh, were after repeated by Claude Perrault, who was a French doctor and after architect, and not uh, not not important architect, who made this Vitruvian triad. Firmitas, solidity, utilitas, function, intended as, as a use, venustas, beauty. I uh, think that Claude Perrault was not, uh, I mean, was not unknown because he made the facade of Louvre, as you could check uh, here. And I would like to add another point, <laughs> the fourth, then today is very important, the budget. Because all these people was able to do it uh, without thinking about the budget, but we need to think every time about the budget. So I'm able to tell you, in my personal opinion, then the, uh, the best uh, idea uh, to show you the last uh, realization of what it was without budget, in my opinion, is La Sagrada Familia of Gaudí, who, of course, still today is still under construction and is a perfect example of who project, because it's not an architect who make uh, the outside of this building, but also think quite clearly how to make also all the interior details. So conclusions is then how important it is to have a culture as a meaning, how important to understand what is a project as a meaning, and how important to live in a country where there is a project culture. And this, I'm sure that all of you understand me, what is project culture, and how if we continue our mission, if we continue to promote this, we make for sure a better, go a better world, probably for our kids. Thank you so much for your attention. Shukran. Thank you so much, Mr. Pierre, for your time and amazing lecture. Uh, we're going to move to the uh, questions segment. If anyone wants to have the to ask a question themselves, please feel free to raise your hand. Uh, but for the meantime, there is a question that was asked uh, about the budget. Yep. The, the fourth most important element. Uh, and uh, what have you ever worked at state? Have you ever? Uh, uh, faced a project or was involved in a project where the budget have altered the design outcome. Again, please, so, I didn't understand exactly your question. Have you ever worked on a project where the budget have altered the design outcome? So where you wanted to do something and then the budget didn't really uh, allow you to do so. That, so then you've changed the design concepts, not entirely, but Okay, yeah. it's very funny because in all my life, uh, of course, I am 25 years old, it's visible for everyone. For I sure. I have yeah. 20, 26 years of experience. Uh, I never had, there was just one time, one time in my life uh, where I make a project and I ask the main question. I was speaking uh, with the mother of, uh, of one young girl, 20 years old girl. And I was trying to understand and say, please, we was in Milan, please, I need to understand the budget. I should say budget. I mean, we do not have budget. There is no problem. But don't forget, I'm not the client. It's my daughter. So I say, okay, goodbye. And it was the first time that I received a, a, a no limit budget one time in my life. All the other ones, all the time, the people try to get uh, um, more for less. 
and this we know perfectly then it's not possible so uh this is vitruvio who say solidity so need to be strong right to think colosseum is more strong nobody's able to destroy it all the people want it but nobody's able to destroy it so need to be safety also need to have the function and at the end need to be also beauty so this is the fight uh, i'm able to tell you then today in the russian federation we start to be uh, a little bit successful let's say like this because we are not taking care anymore just of the project of that process of design but the people are asking to understand how to make a turnkey and this allowed us from the beginning to let them understand that if you want a Rolls Royce, you are not able to put on the table ten thousand dollars. That's the main. So, yes, happened many times, and you are doing something, and you need to be back. But more, uh, more and more, we are choosing uh, our customers, and uh, these customers who are, let me say, more European oriented, and they understand what is the budget. I want to make you an example. I'm sorry because it's very important. Try to think and in Italy to be able to understand how much cost uh, our services to make a project. We need to know the budget. Here in the Russian Federation, it's forbidden to speak about the budget. So how are you able to make a project if you don't know? Is again, sorry, woman, if I will speak not about bags, but I'm not a specialist. But we all know about a car. So I repeat. Uh, the people, how you're able to understand what kind of design of car you need to do if you do not understand the budget, it's impossible. Did I answer to the question? For sure, yes. Yeah, thanks God. Yeah. Then, uh, by the uh, way, it's other people would not make questions. I will start making questions, huh? Because <laughs> I'm able to check all the names here. Hola, Radwan. Oh, Paolo Merlin, I know him. I'm, I'm oh, checking yeah. <laughs> uh, because I'm I'm able. So Most these definitely. important well, questions. There is there is one uh, attendee who uh, wanted to ask a question. Uh, Amira Rizq. Amira Rizq, if you may. Hello. 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 Uh, I want yes. to know some title in the Croatian. Uh, books. Of books. Title. Yes. yes, I believe Amira is asking about the uh, uh, about the resources or the books that you've uh, yes. presented. Well, the one, the first one is the Architectura. Uh, this the is Architectura. Is it, is it the one the by uh, Batista Alberti? No, this is uh, Marco Vitruvio. The oh, Architectura. Okay. Yeah. After there is the Re Edificatoria, that is Leon Battista uh, Alberti. And the other one is just the four books of architecture from Andrea Palladio. Thank you. Oh, please, it's a pleasure. Did that just a question? If you want, we could continue. Huh? I Otherwise, believe, I will make your questions. I believe she only wanted to ask about the uh, books. Well, I, I have a question of my uh, myself. Uh, sure. The you you have a, a very interesting uh, look on life. So you've you've you were born in one place and then you've moved to many different places of the world where the uh, cultures have differed. Do you, how do you think that affected your architectural? Um, Completely. The, yeah, the Oculus Mentis. You know yes. what I'm talking about? Like your, your inner uh, uh, theta. How do you imagine architecture and, and, and your creative process? Do you, do you believe it added? To your architectural experience or, or did it make you yeah, unique I, I, in any way i i understand perfectly your question yeah i'm uh, i'm able to tell you that by culture i feel italian but i'm not uh just because i was studying uh, the university because i was uh, in the high school because i was reading so many things and reading is important so i read more in italian than in spanish or in english uh yes uh, i was a frequent flyer of panam try to think, on American Airlines, uh, traveling around the world, giving the opportunity to see many things and to understand and to catch uh, uh, more um, aspects of many countries. Uh, and it's not just aesthetics, how they live. Uh, so for sure, uh, this uh, allowed me to be flexible because most of my colleagues, uh, Italians, are not flexible. So, so many times they are in Italy and all the people should need to live like in Italy. No, 
uh, if you are in Russia, you need to live like a Russian way. If you are in Finland, you need to live like Finnish way and so on. So this made me a little bit more flexible. So yes, the influence about traveling everywhere. And I was living in Argentina, in Mexico, uh, a little bit in the United States, in Italy, in France, uh, in, uh, I, every time I don't know why I say in London, not in UK, but it was in UK, Helsinki, in Finland, and now it's almost uh, nine years and I'm the Russian Federation. So yes, I try to catch uh, all the aspects to understand because functions, as say with you, are very important and you need to understand that just if you understand the code, that's it. The answer? Yes, uh, there is a question from Mr. Pierre. Oh, my friend. Yes. <laughs> I know him. Damiano, is it? Is that how yes, you spell it? Yes, for sure. Yes, yeah. yes, it's me. Uh, hi, Pierre. So my question is, uh, what advantages your cosmopolitan culture gave to your working experience as an architect? Well, so I'm able to say in one word, uh, then it was uh, written by one important uh, writer of architecture, then it's the opportunity to under, understand the genius logic. So speaking about them, you, you was living everywhere, you catch uh, the spirit of the country, the spirit of the place, and you're able to interpret exactly uh, something who adapted to that place, not for what you like, not for what would you like to change them, not to adapt perfectly to that place. So this cosmopolitan uh, life, and it's not because of me, it's because of circumstances, because of uh, my family, or because whatever, uh, combined with this passion to, to make projects, uh, give me the opportunity to catch uh, the spirit of the place. And it's called uh, genius logic. This was uh, Christian Norbert Schulz, uh, uh, unfortunately a friend who died, who was writing clearly about this topic, genius logic. It's the only thing that I catch, I think, in my life. Thank you so much, Pierre. Great. Your your English uh, is so good. I was so afraid that you will <laughs> criticize me later. How is no, By the way, not, not, not at all. I, 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 would like clear. To, I would like to tell you something, Pierre, because we are speaking all here. You know, then this topic, uh, uh, project culture, is not so fashion. We are just 34 participants. It's interesting. <laughs> but how is important for the work? Because I know your work and you know my work. How is important that nobody take care? Today, everything needs to be Instagram, fashion, and nice looking. More well, in, in a word, sometimes quality is better than quantity. <laughs> Absolutely. I agree with you. I agree with you. Thank you, Pierre. Thank, uh, you, thank you. Thank you so much thank once you. again. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Pierre. Uh, there is a written question by uh, Ms. Noura, uh, Nouran uh, Safa. And uh, I believe she says, okay, when working on developing a project with a historical character, mm -hmm. how can you mix, or how do you believe you could mix a sense of modernity or, uh, or uh, with a historical character as well? Mm -hmm. so, uh, very interesting question, absolutely. So uh, you have an um, historical building, okay? And uh, so many times the legislation in Italy is too close and say, because historical need to be like it was. Please, we do not need to create museums because nobody goes to museums. We need to make uh, again living that building. Otherwise it will die. Uh, so period of COVID, I do not want to speak about medicines, but if, if you do not move uh, the, 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 your building, your historical building to the um, modernity, the building will die. So for sure, what we was doing in Krasnodar is to try to catch something then do not make uh, this building to become more older, but to adapt uh, to what is needed. So we need to be flexible. And so many times uh, we could be flexible, but the legislation is not. So what uh, Ran Safa said as a question is incredibly important because we need to speak also with the authorities and to explain you want then this historical building will continue to survive. Okay, be flexible. 
and adapt to what modernity needs? I hope that I answer and I interpreted correct question. Most definitely. Uh, we have another question uh, from Mr. Sergi Tri Tripalin. Tripalin. Oh. Is that a friend of yours? I know him very well. <laughs> uh, hi, Pierre. Uh, actually, uh, I've got two questions. Uh, the first one is uh, when we'll have a lunch. I was sure about this question. <laughs> I, I After this conversation, tomorrow. I, I promise. Okay. Okay. And uh, the second is uh, how uh, COVID situation uh, made an impact on uh, your uh, job and uh, what is your forecast for the uh, near and maybe distant future? Okay, uh, very good question. I'm able to tell you then uh, COVID, uh, of course, make uh, some changes, let's say like this. At the beginning, I was a little bit afraid. Uh, today, a little bit less because thanks, for example, to this video conference that we're doing. And today, we are near to Riyadh, try to think. Uh, we was able to start uh, managing our um, projects uh, even without having any uh, direct contact with our customers. So we was able to sign contracts by post, uh, by email, and having uh, um, proceeding by making design projects uh, by Zoom. And thanks also by WhatsApp uh, and uh, technology and making virtual tour uh, panoramas, uh, we're able to work today, whatever. It's absolutely not a problem. So uh, try to think that today we were speaking with uh, uh, clients uh, who are in, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, they were in uh, Moscow. And I was able to send uh, one link and they immediately check one uh, virtual tour panorama. So somehow support a little bit more. I'm able to tell you the bad thing is that we were specialized, as you saw, by commercial projects. So I show you practically uh, three were commercial projects. And uh, it was the 80% of our turnover. Uh, that's the reason why I didn't invite you for lunch. Uh, immediately after COVID, change this for the 80% of residential. That is to say that most of the people who were living in a small flat uh, say, what will happen if I will have another lockdown? No, I want to go and live near to the Black Sea. So today we're making two houses near to Gelenjik for clients, high level, I mean, high level position directors of important uh, Russian companies who say, if I will have another lockdown, I do not want to be in a flat. I would like to work and, I, and watch the sea. So in the Russian Federation, increase uh, the 5% uh, of all the sector related uh, uh, with the uh, uh, houses, especially residential houses, not flat. So somehow I'm able to say that uh, fortunately we are surviving. It was a very difficult period. Try to think our company need to change from 80% uh, of commercial uh, specialization to 80% of residential in practically some months. But we are working quite well with that formula. Then we do not make any more just the design projects, but we support our Russian clients to uh, the turnkey uh, project. Answer, Sergei. Uh, yes and no. Um, yeah. You're talking about more about management project, uh, which is obviously easier uh, online. But uh, what uh, I'm thinking, if there will be any changes in uh, people behavior, will they uh, start to escape uh, the cities? Uh, mm -hmm. And how yeah. it will be influenced in, in, in uh, mm -hmm. architecture, etc. So let's say like this. I mean, I understand more a little bit of a kind of macro situation, if I understand correctly. Uh, I'm able to tell you that many companies start to think if offices, uh, uh, as an example, are needed or not. When there was this period of lockdown, then here in Russia, it was very short. In Europe, it's absolutely a catastrophe. They start to understand that probably it's possible to work by, at, at home. And these incredible thousands and thousands of square meters of offices probably are not so needed. So uh, there are some things that are possible to do. But if your work, of course, is not related with offices, computers, and so on, and you are a driver, for sure, your life will not change, you need to continue. Uh, but uh, for sure, COVID already changed, most of all, our mind. 
So today, um, today, yesterday, I was thinking then to participate or one conference like this was needed to be present there. Today is not like this. You are in Russia or uh, other people are in Italy who will answer. Uh, I mean, other people are following from Riyadh. It's incredible. So the distance bec became somehow uh, um, less distance in some aspects. In another one, if we are speaking about how after, not just the project, um, the design process, but realization, for example, the Russian Federation allowed to continue to work on the building construction. Uh, in Italy, it wasn't like this. So it depends where you are. So for the Russian Federation, it was not so this big disaster, let's say. For Europe, is a catastrophe, I'm able to tell you. And probably um, Pierre Damiano is able to uh, confirm. You, you don't know how many people want to be in Russia and not in Europe today. I answer to you? Yeah, now yes, thank you. Now yes. Let's see us as much. <laughs> Thank you, Sergey. Oh, if there is no questions, I will start yes. uh, choosing someone. Uh, I believe, uh, yeah, I believe that was all the questions. Oh, wait, uh, Ula Radwan. Let me. Okay, Mr. Ula, you have the mic. Thank you very much. Sure. Uh, so I just moved to Turkey like a year ago, and I'm starting to look for a job right now. Uh, I'm still searching, but I need to know, like, as, as you spoke a bit about your experience working in another country, how do I make the best of it? What do I make sure that I'm getting out of this experience? Because some, some of the jobs that I was viewing doesn't seem to add anything to, to my view of architecture or to how I, I perceive the uh, the environment around me. May, so, may I make you some questions to understand much better? I'm sorry? Uh, may I make you some questions to understand much better your question? Ye I mean, personally, okay. I need to know from uh, uh, from where you are from. Uh, I lived in Jordan before. Uh, Jordan. And you moved to Turkey? Yeah. Which city? In Istanbul. Istanbul. OK, so it's, it's a really good Istanbul. And then you are, ten, what is your profession? So, I mean, you are an uh, architect, uh, interior designer, architect. designer. You are an architect. How, uh, how long uh, years of experience you have doing this uh, job? Four years. Four years. So you're, I'm sorry, you're at the beginning, huh? Yeah. You're really at the beginning. <laughs> yeah, okay. I am. So, so you move, you arrive to another culture, correct? And when okay. you check, uh, you do not like. Sure. It's not that I don't, didn't like, but I'm finding it hard. Like I'm, I'm kind of drawn into more of an Arab companies that work the same system that I used to work to, uh, that I used to work in. So I'm kind of not getting um, exposed to the to the architecture here. I'm not getting any. I I don't think that I'm adding anything working here because I'm mostly applying for Arab country uh, Arab uh, companies that have that have offices have. here yeah mm -hmm. but in any case uh, uh, when I'm able to tell you by my experience huh, my personal yeah. experience what happened here uh, I was living in Moscow compared to think that in Istanbul and Moscow and we are speaking about the capitals big cities and uh, when I was there I was thinking and I understand Russia and five years ago, uh, my wife uh, um, suggested me to move here in Brussels, London. Then it's completely uh, another situation. This is real Russia. This is not Moscow. Moscow is another planet. Uh, this is real Russia. And uh, uh, try to think that I was already with 20, 20, 21 years of experience. And what I was need to do is to adapt uh, to the place, to understand the place. So. Uh, it's hard because you yeah, know how do i approach that this is the question <laughs> like you know, how do i make begin it, to, to make to make this uh, uh, profession uh, you need just to love it because if you do not love it you you i mean you are not able to survive so what i was able to do is to restart try to think after 21 years of experience to restart uh, and i'm able to tell you then all what i learned from italy from other countries uh, I just uh, readapt uh, slowly, very slowly, to find again the correct key to understand uh, what uh, 
the market wants and that segment that I want to five years. So the, the main question that I need to ask you is how long you will be in Istanbul? Because if you will stay there two, week, two years, uh, forget it. I mean, it's a short time. But if you need to live there, probably. So. This is the plan, yeah. So you need to start. And to start is to understand all the things of that place who is completely different than where you, where you, where you come from. You need to adapt. There's nothing to do. So uh, I'm able to tell you that I start to understand more when I start speaking Russian. When I was in Moscow, I didn't spoke. I, I was not able to speak in Russian. I speak all the time. I was speaking all the time in uh, in English. Just when I start speaking Russian, I start to understand why there are so many mistakes. By the way, uh, Russian. There are many interpretations of this language. So I mean, I do think that clients were saying something, our team was saying something, after was looking and everything was okay, they were speaking just in Russian, after I make one question, and they need to restart from the beginning because they did not understand each other, Russians with Russians, this is just an example, so uh, the only thing that I'm able to suggest to you, and unfortunately need to be like this, is that you need to go deeply on that culture and the circumstances where you are, nothing to do, it would be a very good experience, huh? I mean, don't don't watch on the negative plan. You need to watch in the in the positive. If you love this profession, you will go out. When, I do not know. Thank I'm you very much. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I told you exactly what happened to me. My wife and me, we was planning. Then in six months, everything was solved. After five years, we are just starting. So six months, five years. Try to understand. That is to say that I love her so much. I didn't escape. Yeah. <laughs> that was very helpful. Thank you very much. You're welcome. We have another question from Mr. Leigh yeah. Hanoudi. Yes. Uh, yes. Hi. Uh, I want to ask about the restoration of historical buildings in Russia. What were you obliged to keep? and what you have uh, the freedom to change, both from inside and outside. From outside, I mean the facade, and from inside. It's a very good question, because I say before in the presentation that it's a big labyrinth. So a uh, labyrinth of the legislation is an appeal. Uh, there is no a strong understanding from the authorities uh, what is uh, an historical building? So most of the time they are trying to keep a facade. And uh, uh, most of the time they do not take care of anything about inside. Uh, I say before, in when I received one question, I say that we need to be flexible. And I was meaning on the Italian uh, way of uh, making uh, restoration. Uh, in the case we were in Russia, I need to say that we do not need to be so flexible uh, because I saw things uh, then practically in Italy, we are not allowed uh, because they destroy completely everything. So they, they destroy stairs, they destroy whatever. And uh, don't forget uh, that when we are speaking about historical buildings, we need also to add many other laws, for example, um, fire prevention, we need to start speaking about other kind of things who make more and more difficult. I'm able to tell you that there is a big house in this moment uh, in the Russian Federation about uh, uh, historical restoration. So I'm not able to answer to your question about the Russian Federation because there is no anything to answer. I'm able to tell you that the situation in the Russian Federation is exactly like it was in 1994 in Italy. Uh, when Europe decided to have the same uh, rules of legislation everywhere. And this took from 1994 till 2008 uh, to make uh, this kind of uh, general coordination. So try to understand that we are speaking about uh, 14 years. In Russia, start just now. And in all the historical buildings where I found, I, make, uh, I found many contradictions, but most of all problem that I saw every time was with the fire department and the architectural barriers. So if you want to say it's a nightmare speaking about this. So now 
just facade. I'm able to tell when they are keeping what I saw. But in, in the example you presented, it was also an historical building, and you criticized that they they put a metal on the edge of the building. Sure. Sure. So uh, they made changes in the facade to a limited so, extent. I'm, okay, Let, let's make it in this way, then I will try to explain you what the difference between Italy and Russia with that building, and you, 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 you check clearly. If it was an historical building, there was an incredible control in Italy, and for sure, even if it's seismic zones, okay, you are not able to put this metallic structure outside. It's forbidden. Also, because there are the technologies to make a substitution of this metallic structure. It was absolutely a silly way to try to do this. And for me, it's absolutely not understandable. So in Italy, you was already in the jail if you were doing something like this. In Russia, there are not the same uh, controls. By the way, Olkinka is very far away for Moscow. I mean, we're thinking about 1,000 kilometers far away from Moscow. Nobody takes care of the buildings. There is no respect uh, for historical buildings. So um, the only thing that we try to do, I suggest to my client, please take away this metallic structure because we made, already make the reinforce of all the structure for inside because it was needed. There were incredible mistakes. but. The client uh, was, uh, uh, how to say, you know, this ego, he didn't want to accept uh, that he make a mistake. Practically. And he said, no, let's make it another way. This in Italy, he was in Italy. He was already, uh, all the, the police was saying what, what, what you did uh, in this building. In this case, he said, please make in another way. And what we did is to cover, it was not correct. In Italy, it was not correct to do this. It's fake. I make already the building uh, more bigger, 15 centimeters for one side, 15 centimeters for another one, 30 centimeters plus balcon decoration. Everything is fake. In Italy, it was absolutely not like this. So uh, I, I don't know if I, uh, with this, uh, um, how to say, uh, comparing these two situations, I answer to your question or not. Yes, it's not, yes. You, you understand? Yes. So, but mm -hmm, yeah. tell me. Regarding the insulation. Of course, mm -hmm. when you're renovating it, you need to add insulation uh, to, full, to fulfill maybe some uh, rules in the municipalities in Moscow, others. Did yeah. you add the insulation from sure. inside? From inside? I mean, let's say like this. When we use this system, Capoto, of course, uh, support already uh, the difference that we will have about temperature, even in the south. So it's not this um, big difference like today we was having minus 22 uh, in the in Olginka is a little bit less. But in any case, when we have this uh, system, Capoto, 15 centimeters who are going outside, the real problem is to control where will be, uh, in Italian it's called punto di condensa, where will arrive water. Water is what destroy uh, materials and what make humidity inside. But it was so by the um, dimensions of the wall, yes, made by stones already, then with these 15 centimeters, it was the only reason why then somehow I accept to do it. Because with this, I was protecting inside and also what we'd make by statical way uh, of reinforce inside, it was perfect. I mean, it was already, I don't know. So you, you added this insulation from outside? Outside, of course, also from inside, but not so important like outside. Yes. For sure. And then the wall should look like as before, from outside. Yeah, the wall, I mean, if just because I'm telling to you, but nobody uh, is able really to catch the difference because it looks exactly like it was a little bit as fire, before. Yeah. a little bit fat, let's say like this. I mean, yes. nobody is able to catch. You're able to catch just when you have incredible photo documentation, like in Italy we do, or in Russia, yes, yes. it's impossible to find. So you know you're able to play. It's unfortunately it's like this. They play with this uh, uh, not uh, complete documentation. They do not have documentation. So somehow, I mean, we was trying to respect more as was possible according to the request of the client. Uh, but in any case, for me, it was a fake work. But yes, it's not, it's least, not allowed. In, in uh, I live in Denmark. This thing is oh, not you allowed. Understand. 
Absolutely. Yes, not allowed. allowed. Not allowed. It's, it's, so uh... this is the big difference between the normatives that I love uh, in Europe uh, that so many times are too much, uh, how to say, in Italy is uh, too much uh, strict. So much strict that at the end you are not able to do anything. And here there is uh, so flexible that it looks like Vegas or Disneyland. You know, it's, yeah. it's an extreme of two different situations. I answered to your question, correct? Yes, thank you very much. It was a pleasure. This question is very important for me. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Loy. Um, Mr. Pierre, I believe yeah. this brings us to the, to the end of our webinar today. It, it was, was a, uh, a pleasure yeah. having you, for it real. Was very nice. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, shukran. Yeah, okay. Uh, very nice uh, idea of Archinect. Uh, thank you, Mohammed, if you are, if you will hear us uh, about this. And uh, thank you for all the people who was watching us. It was uh, a pleasure to speak. Uh, I'm able to say to Pierre, who will understand, but also to Andrea Cincotta, who's following us from London. Then uh, I'm writing to my 25 uh, readers. This was Alessandro Manzoni, who was speaking about the most important book uh, in Italy, then it's called I Promessi Sposi. He wrote this book who is famous everywhere. And he say, I wrote this for just 25 persons. I agree with the uh, uh, Pierre, better quality than quantity. Of course. It's Thank always you better so much. quality. Sure. Part. Thank you. Right. Thank you also for your support. It was very right. nice. Of course. It's a pleasure okay. to have you. All right. For our attendees, thank, thank you. you so much for coming in. Thank you so much. Thank yes. you so much. Sure. And have a good night. Goodbye. Thank you. Good night, everyone.